right now we have a problem um, and we're going to go into we're going to kind of loop back this will this will loop into the amf bullmore elite bowling event and it will loop into amateur bowling um and the money that's involved out there but the problem we have is the perception of what a non-bowler thinks of bowling so when somebody uh, say you uh say you ask somebody about bowling who doesn't bowl they don't bowl leagues they don't have their own ball they don't even know bowling's on tv when you ask that person you know, what do you think of bowling? You know, is it a game or is it a sport? Most times they're going to say, oh, it's a cool game. I love playing bowling. I go, you know, once a year with my buddies. We drink a bunch of beer. We have some pizza and we have a good time. That's what bowling is to them. There's awful lot of misinformation throughout the Internet um, and throughout, you know, people's mouths for the most part all the time. So what we need to do uh, is we need to look at each company, each bowling ball company, and try to figure out what they're really good at. Uh, I don't think you should, I, I don't, if you don't have to, if you're not on staff with somebody, I would say to stay away from trying to only drill one type of ball and ball because there's so many different types of balls. Um, I think there's a way to build an arsenal and that's why I wanted to, wanted to kind of create a number system for building an arsenal to make it easier to be able to walk into the pro shop and say, okay, this Brunswick ball is a 200 this EBI ball is a 204, and this storm ball is a 213. That number system, it's not perfect. It's not a science. Uh, you're going to look at some balls, and you're going to be like, wow, really? This ball's supposed to be stronger than this ball? The number system is based simply only on the core and cover value uh, than this ball and this ball. And when I did it with all the EBI balls, I actually even called uh, Nick Tomaszewski, who's one of the guys who does a lot of the R&D work for EBI, and kind of talked to him about you know, what I thought with this number system. And he had said, I think you're onto something there. Good. Okay. Have you done the storm numbering system yet? I did. Um, okay. And I don't have the sheet with me, but, yeah, uh, no, it's fine. But I did do it. Yeah, I did do it. And you guys are more than welcome to do it yourself too. If you know the math, I mean, it's literally just taking the RG as a whole number. So if it's two, five, three and the differentials, Oh, five, three, you just take them both as whole numbers. So, so it'd be 253 minus 53. And so you get 200 and then you take the cover into consideration. If it's a solid, you're going to minus six. If it's a hybrid, you're going to subtract three. If it's a pearl, you're going to add three and that's your total value number. And so like the guys out on tour, they're really, really good at doing that. Like, like these guys, when they go bull practice session, um, and, and I say these guys because they're leaps and bounds better than I am when it comes to that stuff. Like I have, I understand it for other people. I understand it. Like if I'm watching and I'm saying, seeing ball reaction from other people, I can say, okay, this is what you need. But when it comes to my own game, uh, for some reason, and, and I guess a lot of people are actually like this, but for some reason, I don't see my ball reaction as well as I see other people's ball reaction. So making those decisions for myself is really tough. But, but to answer your question now, ball speed is simply about, um, it, it's the speed of the tempo of your feet. And I don't think I've done one on tempo yet either. So let's start with tempo. Tempo is what, uh, it's the modern day version of timing. So, so in order to increase speed, that tempo has to go up. So we're going to go instead of one, two, three, four, go. Now it's going to be one, two, three, four, go. And you're going to increase probably by about two miles an hour just by doing that. When your feet get faster, the swing gets faster and the ball comes through faster. You're not changing anything with your shoulder. You're not pulling the ball. You're not swinging it faster by using your shoulders. You're actually swinging the ball faster just because of momentum of your feet moving faster. Good at that. Prather is just freaking unbelievably good um it don't matter what you do to the lanes that kid's gonna be there i mean he's just chris prather is he's a he's a superstar he's probably the best physical specimen on tour when it comes to being most versatile and all that now he's like the new upcoming chris barnes like barnes used to be that and now prather is taking over that reign he is that guy that kid's good he's really good and congrats to him being the first number one overall pick that's well deserved um, I, I would have taken the same pick. Um, but uh, so one of the announcements that they made for the PBA League draft now is uh, they're they're expanding. So they're adding two teams for next year. The draft, the PBA on Fox. Anybody have any opinions on the PBA on Fox? 
I think it's pretty sweet. I think they've done a pretty love good it. job. Yes. You really Anybody? love it. I love the fact they put the Specto data. I know, isn't it? That's awesome. I mean, but the PBA on Fox, I think, is a great thing. I think they're doing a wonderful job. I think uh, with all the added money that they're throwing in, and you can, and the viewership is up quite a bit this year from previous years. I think it was at least, I can't remember what Riggle's article said, but I think it was 20 some percent higher this year than last year with ESPN. So that's a huge number. I could be wrong. I think it might even be higher than that. I don't remember. And, and I know this might. <laughs> this might ruffle some feathers here a little bit. And I love the movie. I think it's an awesome movie. I think it's hilarious. But I think it was bad for bowling. Um, Kingpin. USBC is doing some really, really good things with the youth. The youth bowling, um, youth bowlers are being trained in the right way. Uh, with junior gold, with the events that USBC is creating for these kids, with stuff that like what we do at Turbo, the Collegiate Expo, college bowling, high school bowling, the way it's growing through, a lot of the states now are using challenge patterns, sport patterns to to train these kids on to get them, you know, in the future. Now, here's the problem. A lot of pro shop guys, a lot of proprietors, bowling center owners, their issue, what they have is they look at bowling and they say, well, we used to have millions of league bowlers. We used to have people lined up at the doors, this, that, and the other. It's not that way anymore. Now all these kids, they're not joining leagues. They're, they're bowling through youth. They're getting through college, and then they're not joining leagues. Um, and they're even going, getting out of high school, going to college. They're not bowling in, in leagues you know, while they're at college, most of them. And that's the problem that proprietors see. And that when, when they say, they say bowling is dying. They say um, they they say that because of you know the the lack of league bowling.